Hello and welcome to this video about the Knowledge Agent. I'm Valentin Zigner and I'm going to show you how you can create a Knowledge Agent in Flowable, link it to a Knowledge Base, and then at the end use that Knowledge Agent within a process to actually use your data from the Knowledge Base in an AI request. So let's get started. And therefore, first we are going to create a new app. So let's call that our document information app. We press create. Now we create inside that app our first model. It is going to be an AI agent and we call that one knowledge agent. And uh, in that agent, we now need to configure the behavior. First of all, we need to set the agent type. There we have different types available. We would like to have a knowledge agent since this video is all about the knowledge agent. And now we can configure on the left-hand side all the different uh, capabilities and features of the knowledge agent. First of all, we can enable AI, API access. So in case we want to use it through the API, we also can enable advanced configuration that allows you to configure which model is going to be uh, used exactly while now we are just using the available default model for our AI agent. Now, first we are going to start with linking a knowledge base before we then configure our operations. So let's first create a new knowledge base and we call that our RAG knowledge base. And in that knowledge base, we now configure the behavior where we are getting the data from. So first of all, you can define the type and there are two different types available. It's process and search and search only. Now, when we go for search only, we assume that we have already a vector store or something similar where we can search inside that could, for example, come from open AI. And when we say process and search, we are also indexing elements to that vector store. So when you say process and search, you define your input data source and that is saying where the data is coming from. And there you have currently two possibilities, content items and static file. Now content items allows you to specify a folder and from that folder, you can dynamically upload files and delete files and it will automatically adapt. Static file means that you have static files, which you are just uploading here, and it is using those files. Now let's go with content items since that we are more flexible. We can specify a path in Flow will work. In case that path does not exist, it will automatically create it. And then we have here the content processing pipeline next. The first step here is gather or expand information. So basically here, we tell it that, yeah, let's just search the subfolders and extract all the items. So that is basically just passing the tree of folders and searching for all the content items, exactly what we want to do. You always have the possibility to specify here also a custom delegate bean implementation, uh, which allows you to do your own implementation. Next, we can go ahead and define how we would like to extract the content and we would like to convert it to markdown format. That sounds good. And next is then splitting the content. So based on that large document, which is now one markdown file, we can go ahead and say how to split it into chunks. Those chunks allow you to keep, first of all, your prompt at the end pretty small, but also allows you to define if you would like to uh, split it by context. So just say each section is one document, or if you would like to do a rather stupid splitting, and that is good when your document is not that well structured, where you just say you have based on the uh, token size of a document, you would like to have a specific size of your chunks. I'm going for the token text splitting since my document is only partially structured. And uh, when you have a mix of documents, then it might be also better to go for the token text splitting since that is just taking it by size. And only that uh, split, which is generated here, which matches best or the few best will then be added uh, to your um, prompt itself. 
Then we have create entry in knowledge base. That's rather something internal, nothing to customize here. And last is then our vector store configuration. And there we have a few different possibilities in here. So we can either go for Elasticsearch. So in case you are running global with Elasticsearch, that is pretty easy since the Elasticsearch, you don't need to do um, anything. You need to ensure that your Elasticsearch is new enough since old Elasticsearch uh, versions do not support the um, vector search itself. You can define how you would like to query. So there are some really technical uh, query configurations in here. Um, which are also partially specific to Elasticsearch. I'm just using the default in here and then we don't need to do that much here. Um, you can do further reading uh, actually about those values than inside the documentation. We also need to specify the embedding configuration. So the embedding type, which we would like to have. So then we have OpenAI and Azure OpenAI or custom. I'm going for OpenAI with the embedding ADA002. And we need to specify still an API key. Now, when you say default, then you just provide the key here. So there you have your SK approach uh, and then whatever key in here. The alternative to that actually is uh, to have a secret. A secret you can define in Flowable Control or Flowable Hub. When you just go there, then you uh, scroll on the left-hand side here in Flowable Control to Platform, and then you say Secrets. Now here you have the possibility to add a new secret. So just press Create, give it a name, and then uh, you can enter your uh, secret in here. I'm not going to do that now since I already have one. I call that OpenAI as well. And we are just using this secret in here. So let's give that the name OpenAI. And then we can save our knowledge base model since that is done. Back to our knowledge base agent or knowledge agent actually. Uh, we have a few more things to configure. Next up is operations. And here we can define basically the methods which can be executed against our agent, which then are going to use the knowledge base. The data from the knowledge base is included no matter what. So you don't need to define anything about that, but you need to still specify your input and your outputs. For me, I'm just saying both of them are just text. I'm not going to for uh, something structured and I'm going to call that just ask question. And then we need to define our prompt and the user message actually should be our question since we have the input type uh, text. We just use the variable text in here, which is going to be exactly the question uh, from uh, the user. So the input to that one. And we just specify a system message. Uh, and I just say here, yeah, answer the question only with the provided content. So it should not make anything up. Uh, in case you don't know, just respond with, I don't know. Okay. Actually, I should do the quotes correctly here. So now, okay, let's press save in here and we can save that model. The audit here, uh, by default, just audits everything. So the basic agent interactions, low level exchange and the knowledge base usage. Uh, where we can then see basically which items from the knowledge base it actually used. So let's create a simple process last. And that process is just to ask a question. We are going to create that one. We are creating a simple form, uh, which is going to be then our uh, question basically. So that one is already done. We could make it mandatory and so on. For now, just for demo purpose, I am skipping that. Uh, so we are adding an AI agent task here. Let's call that ask question to knowledge agent. And then afterwards, I'm adding a user task show result and then an end of the process. There are other videos when you are more interested in BPMN. So here for the AI agent task, we link that now to our existing knowledge agent. 
And we then say here for the operation, yeah, let's use the ask question. We have an input in here where we could actually switch to the expression mode. And that is our question from the beginning and our output is going to be the answer. And we now say in the show result, we are adding a new uh, answer form. And in here, we could use quickly a sub form just to uh, basically uh, show the ask question start form. I'm going to make that one actually um, disabled so that one cannot be uh, changed. And we are going to add then the answer here as well. The variable name is answer, so that is correct. And now we can save everything and publish it and try that out. Now, at this point, basically, there's nothing inside our knowledge base. When we go to documents and work, we see that the knowledge base uh, was just created. We have an empty folder in here and nothing is in this knowledge base. So when I now create a new work item, ask question, um, what is the schedule of the Tuesday? Uh, it should respond with, I don't know. Since it's a live demo, we are going to see if that is going to work. It takes a little bit since we are now reaching out to the AI and we see, I'm sorry, but I can't answer the question and falls outside of my knowledge base. That is totally fine. So now we are going ahead in the documents, I'll go to work and go to the knowledge base. Um, and then we upload a file. So I prepared here a small booklet. We can just upload that. And while we are doing that, I go here to control where we have actually agents and we have here knowledge base definition where we see the one definition which we have and items. And there we see actually that we have two items. One has container false, the other one has container true. The one with container false is the actual content item while we are also representing uh, folders in here that we know basically when we need to trigger an uh, learning of the knowledge base. When we go here to the false one, we see a few different informations. So first of all, it does not have sub items. So since it's not a folder, it doesn't have those. It also does not have links. That means it actually was not used uh, inside an agent so far, which is correct. We have in here also the scope ID, which is a content item ID, and we can click on that and we see basically here, this is basically the document which we are using and we can investigate that document. Now let's actually go back here and we are going ahead and now asking a new question since we know that uh, this is uh, already there. So what was the schedule of Tuesday? And here we now get basically a long response. We could display that in a multi-line that it looks a little bit nicer, but uh, with that we uh, have basically the answer. And when we uh, refresh the page here, then we see actually we have now our first knowledge base link and that is the agent which used that actual and we also see the score with which the document scored in here. We can navigate uh, to that knowledge base and we see in here um, the information which was provided. So we um, have here the context information which was provided um, with the document itself. So that is our extracted document. You see the structure is only partially nice. And we also see here uh, the response which came back and last but not least, we also see um, what we have uh, asked. So what was the schedule of Tuesday? You see the amount of tokens which it used at the end, while you have pretty much two numbers here, the one from the input and the one from the output. Uh, so they are just here uh, mentioned in that list. With that, we finished the knowledge agent. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.